Hello, glad to see you made it to our second session of the day. Enrique Ayos here as the host for the application integration track. Let's keep the day moving and settle in with our next presenters, Rashmi Kaushik, Integration Product Director, and Andy Garrett, Technical Product Manager. Please feel comfortable making comments or submit any questions in the chat. We're live and here to have a conversation. With that, please, Rashmi, go ahead. Thank you so much. Hi, folks. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, hope everybody's enjoying the sessions in the app integration track. Uh, this is our second session today, so I'm very excited to bring this to you along with Andy. Let's look at what we have for you in the agenda. So, folks, many of you uh, probably already know what are APIs and how they work and such. So Andy and I are here today to tell you a little bit more about um, why APIs are important, how to drive more value from your APIs to both your uh, technical and your business um, environments today. We'll look at some of the key use cases on how um, APIs are actually transforming businesses. We will look at a, a, a newly recognized pattern called API-led connectivity or API-led integration, which has brought about a paradigm shift. We'll talk about some of the value points there and how you can adopt it in your own enterprise using our IBM products, IBM App Connect and API Connect. Andy will actually follow every, um, my part of the presentation with a demo, which is going to be the fun part. You're gonna watch a lot of the things in action the things that I share with you in the in the presentation, well, Andy will actually be able to show and tell in the demo itself. All right. So with that, let's um, let's move on to um, the content that we have for you here today. So um, with many of the enterprises taking on uh, digital transformation initiatives, um, the end-to-end -end digital solutions that they are creating often entail entities from within the organization as well as outside. Um, and this really raises the need for a very strong integration strategy. And APIs are at the very heart of that integration strategy to create more connected enterprises, if you will. So it's no surprise when we see numbers like this, you know, staggering numbers like 15,000 average APIs in an organization or 75% of enterprises leveraging cloud-based APIs to create customer engagement applications. What this also shows us is because of these types of numbers, it is really important to not only manage your APIs well, but also drive reuse of your APIs across the organization. So this is the general theme of what we'll be talking about in today's session. So I look forward to telling you more about it. All right. Um, I am unable to move the chart to the next. Um, you give us a hand. There you go. Thank you. So APIs are transforming businesses across all enterprises. Now you can see some of the examples here from finance, healthcare, automotive, retail, but I have um, a few selective use cases that I wanna share with you just because of the, the variety of API-based solutions you know, that, uh, that they bring to bear. Um, so if you look at a very large bank uh, in South Africa called NetBank, they've actually created API-based uh, solutions to bring 360-degree view of their data um, from their master data management repository to support Know Your Customer solutions. You have Canon Europe, which is completely different industry, and they are using API-based solutions to integrate all of the data in their organization and channel that data to, um, again, all API-based integration to channel that data to various partners and customer channels consistently. And then we have Brad Green, which is a, you know, it's a company focused on green solutions that has created an environmental monitoring solution. And um, this is all API based again. They send alerts and notifications to their clients uh, when the pollution levels are unsafe. So you can see from the variety of solutions and applications and integrations that we have, um, how APIs are really transforming businesses 
and uh, providing both technical as well as business value. You can read more about the API-based solutions and case studies in IBM.com case studies. There's a link at the very bottom of this chart. Um, you can, um, you can uh, take a look at more such use cases there. All right. So um, we know now that APIs um, are, are very popular in creating API-led solutions. In fact, API-led integration or API-led connectivity which I may use interchangeably throughout the session, has brought a paradigm shift to organizations. So you may have been using APIs um, in your own environment to uh, integrate applications and data. However, if those APIs are solving only one very specific problem or uh, providing a solution to one very specific uh, problem in your environment, and they cannot behave like building blocks where they can be reconfigured and used for other solutions in your enterprise, then you are essentially using your point-to-point uh, -point integration style. Now that may work just fine for your organization. If you don't see a lot of dynamic changes in the, in the environment, if you're not introducing a lot of new applications or you know, connecting to new data sources and things like that. But once there is a change, to connect to a new application or a data source, what happens is uh, the, the cost of taking on that integration or that change becomes really expensive. That's where API-led integration or connectivity comes into play, where it's a modern way to integrate data and apps through reusable APIs. So let's talk about why it matters to organizations. Why should you do this? So like, like I said, APIs are behave like building blocks um, of integration. So when you, you may have one developer creating an API that now powers many tens or hundreds of integrations and applications in your organization. So what that does is it reduces complexity, improves speed, reduces cost and such. Also because APIs behave like little Lego blocks that you can reconfigure very quickly, use in different integrations, you know, make changes like remove a Lego block, put one in. It, it enables you to adapt much faster to changing business requirements and um, the technology changes that you may have in your underlying environments. Now, um, in terms of better control, APIs also, these same APIs are powering both backend um, uh, solutions as well as front-end customer experiences. So um, you are now providing consistent information to your clients across all channels. So these are some of the key benefits for API-led integration or connectivity. You can gain many more benefits. We haven't gone through an exhaustive list, but these are the key ones to take away uh, for API-led integration. All right, so let's talk about a little bit about the multi-dimensional value of an API-led approach. There are three things that I will talk to you about in the rest of this chart, the rest of the charts in this deck. One is reusable API connectivity. Um, and then the second is the integration of applications and data using existing APIs in your organization. And the third is about unified authoring of new APIs across teams. So we'll drill into each of these. Um, our products, IBM API Connect, as well as IBM App Connect, work together very well to help you benefit or get this multidimensional value in each of these scenarios. So we'll talk about that a little more and show you how. Um, so when you think about reusability of an API, so I may have an orders API. I may be an API provider creating an orders API in the organization. Now, there may be several consumers in the organization that are working with me to consume this API in very different ways. Um, in one case, my order API may be consumed by my business partners to go fulfill orders. In another case, they may be consumed by my sales teams in order to be able to forecast um, sales from historical data. Um, I may also be sending the same orders data to my supply chain team in order to manage inventory, plan it, replenish it, and so on. And then lastly, I may also be shipping uh, orders and be able to see the status of those orders using my orders API. So um, it serves multiple purposes in the organization and multiple business scenarios, which really emphasizes you know, the reusability of the API. Let's talk about the reusability of the API now from a roles or a people standpoint. 
right? So in any typical organization, you're going to have API providers and API consumers. Your API providers may be your API or app developer who typically creates and manages APIs, who secures the API, you know, with certain policies, governance policies, security policies, and so on. They're now also able to share the APIs more broadly and such. They may be using the IBM API Connect uh, capabilities in order to do all of these things and also share the API with their consumers using the IBM API Connect developer portal. Now, once it's shared to the develop through the developer portal, API consumers within and outside the organization that are um, uh, that are permitted to access these APIs are now able to access it, understand it, subscribe to it, and reuse it. Now, on the consumer side of the house, we may have very different consumers. In one case, you may have API app developers uh, or integration experts who may be going to the API Connect developer portal um, to explore the APIs, to try it out in a sandbox environment, then to be able to use it more in a production fashion, subscribe to it, and actually use it in a production fashion. That may be happening through the IBM API Connect developer portal. But I may also have in an organization a central integration team, which consists of integration experts and business technologists who are working to connect or integrate applications and data. They may be using IBM App Connect and they may need to discover uh, existing APIs via the uh, App Connect catalog. And um, they may want to reuse that in application, other application and integration projects that they're working on. So this is where IBM API Connect and IBM App Connect come together to provide the set of capabilities for providers and consumers to be able to use the APIs in whatever context they are working, wherever they are working. Right. We'll talk about this a little more. Andy's going to show you some uh, great scenarios here, and he's actually going to demo how some of this collaboration works. All right. Um, just honing in a little bit more on what I told you on the previous chart, you may have an API um, provider or developer publishing an order API, for example, uh, to the API Connect developer portal. Now that, that um, API is available to all the consumers in the developer portal, but also you may have central integration teams in the, um, who are working out of App Connect. And you will see that middle image that actually shows you the API appearing in an App Connect catalog where the central integration team is able to search it, find it in the catalog and be able to use it to now assemble uh, some integration flows, which is that image at the very bottom that shows a coffee orders API, for example, um, you know, being used in an integration flow. This is also something that Andy will show you in the demo so that you can get a better um, understanding of how it works with IBM API Connect and App Connect. Now, the everything that we've spoken about so far is are all about existing APIs and APIs being published to the developer, API Connect developer portal, how it's available to all the consumers and so on. What we're going to talk about now is the authoring of new APIs. Let's take a let's take a scenario where I, as an API developer, I'm working with my central integration team of business technologists and integration experts. They come back and tell me they're on a project with very tight deadlines, and now they need an API specifically to fulfill a need in their project. But they don't really, they need full visibility into the API and how it's getting modeled and built so that they can continue their integration work in parallel. So at this point, I get invited as an API provider or a developer you know, my central integration team can invite me into App Connect. App Connect provides the capability here for me and the rest of the team that I'm collaborating with to create or model an API with a full no code experience. And this is where I can model a coffee orders API from scratch in App Connect uh, with a full no code experience, provide the different properties and the operations, then implement that API now, same thing in App Connect. And you can see that middle image in a flow where we're implementing it via the order desk application. And then finally with, you can test it, secure it, and I can simply with the click of a button, I can now deploy it uh, into the API Connect developer portal. So this is a very seamless approach between API Connect and App Connect 
to enable unified authoring of new APIs across teams in order to be able to accelerate integration projects. Now, Andy is going to show you this as well in his second scenario in the demo. So I will pass it on to Andy to, um, to actually show, show and tell. And uh, this, was, this is going to be the fun part of the, the session. Andy, over to you. Okay, thanks, Rashmi. And uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Sunny Hursley in the Winchester, um, where, uh, where a lot of the magic happens. So I'm just going to uh, ask if I can have my uh, screen shared, please, onto the stage. And uh, when that's there, we'll uh, we'll get going. Excellent. So you can see what I can see. I'm here with it on a uh, on a portal. So I'm just going to drag this down. And that's I'm going to. Uh, thank but you very much. There's big service. Can you hear me? You can. Rash me. I I Andy, you're okay. We're good, we're good. All right, okay. In that case, I'll carry on. I just want to make sure uh, that. Uh, okay. So, um, I'm going to go through. So, welcome to the Acne Coffee Roasters Company. You thought you'd come to IBM, we're going to sell you some coffee. Meet the team. Basically, we want to collaborate in Acme Coffee Roasters. We have Annalisa, our business technologist, Martin, our IT integration expert. It's SecCon after all. And we're, uh, we've got RAM, our API developer. I'm going to show you how we all work together to, uh, to build some APIs and reuse. So we are an up and coming company. We've really got to get going because we have to worry about things like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, doubling our sales. So, you know, we need to make sure we can sell coffee to anybody, anywhere when they want it. You know, we really, we really want to get going. We really want to be agile. And so, of course, we've chosen IBM integration. Of course we have. So what's my first demo scenario? Well, Rashmi talked a lot about reuse, and Rashmi also mentioned, what was it, 15,000 APIs? And you've got to be able to find them. You've got to be able to look at them. You've got to be able to consume them and size, and size up for them. And lots of different people have to be able to get to the APIs. So for example, we might need a sandbox so that you can come and discover our APIs, try them out, put them out in a safe place. We'll show you that. If you then decide you want to do business with us, and we got the best coffee, so of course you do, you can then become a partner or a wholesaler and you can sign up to our APIs, and we'll show you that as well in your own portal that gives you self-service. And because we like to drink our own champagne, why wouldn't we use our own APIs? So we have a separate portal internally. APIs, because we think API led is the best way to get business value right out of the door. So I'm going to do my magical screen share. Hopefully, um, if people can keep me honest, you should be able to see. And I'm going to kick off and show you where we're going. So this is our Acme Coffee API portal. If you want to discover us and think, you think you're doing business with us, we want to give you a chance to come and try our APIs out and try doing business with us. It's really easy to use. You come in, you browse our APIs, you can see all, from, you can see all the different plans, 100 calls an hour, 200 calls an hour, et cetera. You can expand this. You can join our Chili Beans Club. You can even order merchandise. You want to order a T-shirt. You want to order some coffee. You want to order a mug. And you can sign up to all the different plans available. And we want to make it as easy as possible for you to use our APIs. So we help you out. We let you download the open API document that you're going to need. But we also teach you how to use the API. We can auto-generate code fragments for you in your favorite language so that you can do and call our APIs. With us here at Acme Coffee. And I am going to our API. We have self-service sign-up, just like everybody else. We have a else. We want your name, and you can sign up, try it in a sandbox. Fill the, put the cap, sign up, in it, and you can explore our APIs and you know, try it, see how easy it is to do, but you know, on a new journey. We'll give you the key there. So if you head in here, and you can go, yeah, if you don't want to come. Andy, you're, here, you're going in and you out try with your audio. Try it out. So we, are, we have built for you 
API Connect has built this for you automatically. Do this. You know, I just I just let IBM do this. API Connect has built this. Out the API so that anyone Andy? without the API is getting Andy, I'm sorry to, and, yeah, Andy, I'm sorry to interrupt. Notice that, Andy? that we also generate data for you. And you can try the out. Andy, you're, you're breaking so You can come and do both. Check it out and you know, really go sandbox. But we have a really separate so when you sign up and you want to do business with you, we want to keep you happy. We have partner orders, if you're a partner, wholesaler orders, and you can check pricing, you can check inventory, all of those different APIs. And again, it's the same experience. So you can browse the orders, and we can see that we have two separate uh, APIs here. Why do we have two separate versions? Well, don't you just hate it when you're using version one of everything on your phone and it says, I'm sorry, you must upgrade to version two. That's a nightmare, isn't it? Wouldn't it be great if you could choose which version you want? Well, with the API, you know, straight out of the box. Also, we have different levels of partner. So if you order a zillion tons of coffee, we'll get, make you a gold bean partner. If you just order once a week, it's a silver bean partner. And even if you just want to order coffee, I don't know, once every three months, we want your business. We want your business via our APIs. So you'd be a gold bean partner. We also mentioned we eat our own dog food, we drink our own champagne. Here's our internal APIs. So I can see things like customer messaging. I can see all of these lots of APIs. Rashmi mentioned, what, 15,000. We scale like there's no tomorrow. Look at all the different APIs and versions. They're all managed, they're all sorted. And each one of these behind it has an auto-generated exploration, auto-generated documentation, auto-generated uh, test client that you saw before. You can with that and I work with Martin, they can come to our in developer portal, they can try it out in the sandbox. Really great of A, we can test the APIs that we sell outside so that we can check our partner APIs are working, we can check our sandbox APIs are working, but we can new value here. So how do we do this? Yeah, it all looks great and it's fantastic. And people say, well, you know, you're there, Andy, you're an IBMer, you've got a pile of engineers to help you out. Well, it's all as part of the Cloud Pack for Integration. Welcome to the Cloud Pack for Integration with lots of different integrations. But today we're talking about APIs. So, in Andy, and, can you uh, hear me? This is the opening screen. Um, and, Andy, can you hear design me? I can hear you, Rashmi. You are, you are very choppy. Um, your audio is coming through very choppy. And uh, I think we, we missed a little part of your presentation earlier because I think you were speaking, but it definitely wasn't coming through. Just make, can, maybe you can turn off your video so that um, maybe your audio doesn't glitch as much. Okay, let me, uh, let me kill my video. Let's see what I can do with that. Great. All right. How do I turn my video off? I apologize, everybody. How's that, how's that looking? Can you hear me? Can you hear? Yes, me? this is this is much better, Andy. Yeah, this is better. I, I may I may turn on my video to just um, give you a quick heads up if you get um, choppy again on the on the audio. I can see you, but I can't hear you. We good, Rashmi? Can you? That'd be great. Awesome. All righty. Cool. Sorry about that. I shall carry on. Okay, if you can uh, go through, I've got. Is we're organizing our APIs. You can see we've got loads of APIs, and we can have as many as we want. This is as many as I could build in the demo at the time. We're organizing them in groups, we're organizing them in products. So I've got my coffee orders, and I can keep my multiple versions in one place together. I can also add plans. What do plans do? Well, plans allow me to restrict how often you can call an API, because we're going to be growing quickly and we want to protect our backend systems. Because if people start ordering a thousand times a second, maybe my old backend database can't cope and I might need an upgrade. So I want to restrict it to so many a minute. And again, this is all out of the box. It makes it real easy to do. And basically what I'm going to do, just uh, you know, add a, um, 
and a plan here for serving you in a minute. So this is my copy orders API here. And what I'm also going to do here, I can see in my products that I've got uh, different ones. So that's my to a partner order one. So if I'm a partner, we mentioned about having different levels of partner. And if I go into the plans, remember in the uh, portal, we showed you about the bronze bean, the gold bean, and the silver bean partners. It's a different level of I can give you different levels. Someone a hundred. Someone a hundred. Development experience. Doing. Being over code, right? As, as in, you get those separate portals for internal, consumer, and that one has its own portal. So we have the sandbox, the partner, and the internal. And if we look at these uh, catalogs, we have the internal one, we have the partner one, and we have the, uh, the sandbox one. And you can see some of my test ones here. And literally, we just put the APIs we want and the products we want in one. And, uh, you know, it's um, you know, going through. I can see, Enrique, I can see in the chat about audio. Do you want me to stop for a while and see if we can fix up the audio, or should I carry on? What do you, what do you think we should do? Hi, uh, yeah, uh, we we are still having choppy audio. Um, I, I apologize to to the audience. We we, we will have these sessions uh, recorded. Uh, since that we we won't have that that problems in the recording, but uh, let's let's give it another try, Andy, and see if we could get better audio now. Okay, let me see. Let me see what we can do. Let me let me carry on. Let me know how I'm doing. Apologies, everybody. I really am looking forward to telling you all about this. So uh, let's see. So here we are with the different APIs, the different products, and the different catalogs. And what we're seeing here is that I can move them around, and I can have the same APIs in different ones. How do I create the portals? I simply go into the portal, and I say, "Can I have a portal, please?" And I automatically get it generated from API Connect. It's really simple. For each catalog that I'm in, I've got a portal, and then I can customize it. I can add graphics. I can add. I can change my text. I can do you know whatever I want to do. So let me just pause there for a second, and I'm just going to recap very briefly on what we talked about. Is this first one that we uh, that we mentioned? So what we talked about is sharing and reuse. We have different catalogs for different people. We also have. Um, the ability to self-service sign up. We have the ability to test it and sandbox it. And also, you know, we're making it as easy as possible as we can. Okay, so that's fair enough. But how do we build an API? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to build a new version of an API. Why is that? We've already got orders. We can get orders. That's great. Ah, we have a problem. What we need to do is we're growing faster and our old database just isn't powerful enough. So we're going to move to a new order system called Autodesk, which is a, a, a SaaS based system that we can use at will scale as we do. So we need to get this quickly because obviously we saw like, you know, for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, et cetera, and it's all good. So as Ram, as the developer and app developer, I'm going to get together with Annalise and Martin and we're all going to build this API together. You know, grouping together is the best way we believe to make sure that we're going to um, you know, get the uh, get the app out. So what we're going to do, we're going to connect to Autodesk, which is our new system. We're going to build an API together with um, all the all the API fields that we need. We are then going to publish it in the catalog, and then we're going to show you how to reuse that. So let me uh, hop over to my uh, demo again, and whoops, I will. Uh, uh -huh. We come back. Apologies. There we go. So I'm going to go over my demo again. So I'm here in Autodesk, which is a SaaS version. If you want to try this demo, you can try it out yourself because Autodesk gives you a free trial. Here. So anything that we do here that we show you, you will be able to do yourself. And basically, it's got an API, but the API doesn't have a swagger and an open API spec. It's actually just described with JSON and stuff. So 
what we need is a custom connector to build. And how do we build a custom connector? Well, to build a custom connector, we have a connector development kit. And to show how that's going to happen, that we're low on time. There's a session on Thursday where Ram Kumar is going to show you all about how to build the connectors using the connector development kit. So have a look on there. I'll be there. And great. This is new this year, and it's really, really cool. So definitely, yeah, definitely check it out. So what are we going to do? Well, actually, because my friend has already built me a connector, I'm going to go in the catalog because I want to use um, Ram's connector. So he has created me with the CDK, an Autodesk connector. Thank you very much for that. I'm going to put my credentials in here that I've got from my Autodesk instance, and I'm going to connect that. So I'm going to simply check my store ID, my API key. Remember, we said we had security built in. Everything in IBM is as secure as we can make it. And I'm going to real simple. I've connected to Autodesk. How hard is it to connect to most systems? A lot harder than that. So now I've connected to Autodesk. I'm going to create a flow. Now, normally I type this in, but we've only got so much time. So I'm going to go into the asset repository and get one I built earlier. So here's my coffee orders API demo, and I'm going to create it from an asset here. So what am I creating? Well, the first thing is I'm going to create a model. And what's a model? Well, a model is simply just a pile of stuff that um, we want. This is the information that we want from our customer. So based on myself and Annalisa and Martin, we're going to get together and say, we need to create this. Uh, what information do we need for an order? Well, we need items, item codes, quantities. We need payments. We need customer names. We need addresses. And normally, we'd have to go and get a swagger editor or something, and we'll uh, you know, go and edit it. But we don't want to do that. We don't have time. So here in App Connect Designer, this is the tooling. This is the code. I'm building it in real time here. All we do is just type in the fields we want in plain English, tell them it's a string, tell them whether it's a number. And we can all work together to agree you know, what the customer ID is, emails, how many fields there are on the address. We then say, do we want to retrieve orders? We want to create an order. So we select that. And what happens when we create an order is we're actually creating an API. An API always has a request and a response. So I could have to code the request and the response, but why should I? App Connect automatically generates it for me. I'm going to need some test data that matches the model I already created. It's a pain creating test data, isn't it? That's why in App Connect, we generate it for you. You can see it on the screen. It's all about helping you out and keeping the speed up. So I've created the response, and I've created the request. So what do we say we're going to do? We are going to go and connect to Autodesk. So I'm going to go in and say, after the request, what's the next thing I'm going to do? I'm going to connect to Autodesk. And I'm going to pull the order desk connector that I just created, and I'm going to select. I'm going to create the order. This is what I have to do. All the other things are listed. And automatically, App Connect shows me all of the fields that order desk wants. Did you see me type anything? Not yet. So there's an awful lot of fields in there. Some systems that you connect to, if anyone knows things like SAP and things, have literally hundreds of thousands. It's really hard. And we in the team, myself, Annalisa, and Martin, we've, you know, we're a great bunch of friends, but we could do with another friend that knows everything about how to map. So I've got one called Watson, and uh, Watson's built right into the software. So Watson knows about mapping, and it can start giving me suggestions to accelerate going through. So we can look, all three of us, we, you know, when we build these here, we build these all together. And notice how, you know, first name, last name, but it knows that city and town are the same. It knows that state and state and county are the same. And so I can go through and review what Watson suggested and pick the ones I want. So payment type and payment status, not quite right. Sorry, Watson. But as I'm accepting these or rejecting them, Watson is learning behind the scenes. So as the thing goes in war games, Watson will be better the next time it plays. And so it learns about how you're mapping, and it learns about your business. So I'm going to apply the suggestions, and I'm now going to fill in, and I'm mapping. What does mapping mean? Well, all I'm doing is I'm taking the data from my model that I created, and I'm putting it to those fields and putting it in the fields that Autodesk wants. So I'm basically saying here, I'm taking the postcode from my API, I'm putting the postcode into Autodesk. I'm taking the email from request, putting it into Autodesk. Now, we can do things like you know, changing case, splitting things, doing lookups, all this kind of stuff. And there'll be more advanced sessions on that kind of thing. But here, we're just going to do it simply. 
Show you an example for the order items. Remember we said that our um, API only lets you order one item at a time, but order this once an array. Well, here's all. For those of you who know, you just put the square brackets on to say this array, and away you go. And now I don't have to do things like create array, add a child, dot append, all those coding stuff. Um, App Connect knows how to do parent and, ch and children. So literally, I'm choosing them from the menu. I mean, this is literally how it is. Um, I'm going through. Notice I can look at stuff up. I can type ahead. I can look for uh, suggestions. Um, I can uh, transform the data. And that's probably about as far as I want to go. Now, Annalisa had a great idea. She said, every so often, we have a problem. And what the problem is, is that people order way too much coffee. Martin says, well, hey, that's never a problem, right? And he says, well, OK. People accidentally order too much coffee. I mean, how many of us has not ordered a thousand pounds of coffee accidentally? I mean, it happens all the time, right? So what we're going to do is we want to put a check in and say, if the order value is over a thousand dollars, we want someone just to check it out. Just make sure it's real. And that can be tricky, but not that connect. Because what we're going to do is literally we're going to choose from those models that we did. So what's the value of the order? What's the price times quantity? So I'm not going to do math.import, et cetera. It's just like a spreadsheet. I'm going to do price times quantity. So there we go. No problem at all. Yeah, anyone can do this. We're all working together. And if it's greater than 1,000, then I need to let somebody in the company know. Now, we use Slack in the company. So I need to Slack somebody. Luckily, out of the box, we have a Slack connector. We've got loads of connectors that ship with the product, more being built all the time. So if I want the Slack connector, here I am. So I want to send a message. Well, all right, the Slack connector is really hard to use. I just have to click send message. And it goes off to Slack. And it says, do I want to send it to a channel, a user group? I want to send it to a channel. OK. It will go off to Slack, find all the channels. This is live. And I pick the channel I want. You know, it's real easy. So I want to show Acme Coffee orders. So that's the channel I want. And now my friend Watson is going to give me a suggestion. Now, the problem with this is, remember I mentioned that Watson gets better the next time it plays? Of course, this isn't the first time I've done this demo. I've rehearsed it. So the last time, I mapped this in. So Watson has learned from the last time, because I accepted it, and has actually put it in. And this isn't what I want for the demo, but it shows that as I accept more fields, it's learning about my company. And in IBM, you keep these insights yourself. Yeah, in, in the context. so you know it's learning about your company for you. So I'm going to be a little bit sneaky in this video, and I'm just going to do the one I built earlier. But what we can see here is we literally just type it in. A high value order is received from email, select the email. The total is quantity times the price. Simple. But I, I don't know. This looks too easy. I want to check it works. I've got to do some testing. So normally I'd have to expose it and deploy it and all the rest of it. We don't have time to do that. We need to be in the room and getting this out because Black Friday is coming up real soon, right? And so wouldn't it be great if I could just check that the Slack integration was working right from here? You see on the left-hand side, it's generated some sample data. Wouldn't it be great if I could just run a test with that sample data, put it straight into Slack? Oh, yeah, I can, right from the editor. That's sent a Slack message. And if you don't believe me, there it is in real time. We're integrating in real time here, just right from the editor. And we'd probably better check that order desk one works as well. So let's um, create some data. Oh, let's let AppConnect create the data for me. You know, wh why should I have to do that? I'm going to type in these TechCon uh, demos and items purely so we can find them. And that's what we want to be able to do. And so I'm going to create the order, hit the button. It goes off to order desk in real time, creates that order. And then what happens is, let's have a look in order desk. And here it is. There's my tech, tech on demo item. So I'm sure it's working. There's my price. There's my quantity. I haven't even left the editor, and I know my integrations are working. You know, if you want to do this, have I got the password right? Have I got the field names right? You can check it real easily. And finally, I'm just going to map the order ID into the response. And that's my API built. Oh, but maybe not yet. Because we mentioned about the plans, how many times a second or how many times a minute you can order it. For those of you who are familiar with App Connect Designer, originally, that was as far as you got. For most of you familiar with API Connect, you might recognize that this looks like the API Connect editor. 
But hang on, I didn't change tools here. I'm even still on the same tab. Integrated authoring lets you build the API Connect policies here, so you can do things like you know jots and OAuths and all this kind of stuff, rate limits here, and the App Connect connectivity that you just saw in the same editor. We're building one thing all in one place. And kudos to the engineering team who built this. This is, this is really, really cool. And so I want to test it fully end to end so that it's deployed to API Connect and Data Power, or massively secure gateway, and App Connect. And I've got to take all those and deploy them into API Connect, bind them together, and I'm just going to press the green button. And the tooling will deploy it to API Connect and App Connect and Data Power. And it will give me a pile of test data. And it will let me try it end to end. I'm going to generate the data. It's holding my hand. It's helping me out. Anyone see a line of code anywhere? I didn't think so. So I'm just going to add these in. Here's my item code. Here's my order. So I'm calling my API now. And notice it's generated a test client for me. So I can do it. It's going from the API, through the gateway, through the rate limit, into the um, order desk in real time. There it is, Techcon Demo 2. And I'm done. All I have left to do is now socialize it on my portal. Because I built my uh, API. And uh, oh, well, wouldn't it be useful if someone else um, socialized it for me on my portal? Well, when you press that green button, App Connect and API Connect and the integrated authoring experience um, goes through and uh, automatically deploys it to a portal so that you can discover it, check it works in the portal, and all the rest of it. What you've seen here is not me sort of going through, all right, it's video because I can't type fast and talk at the same time. But what I've got is it's built everything for you. So what I've done is we created a model. We collaborated on that. We connected. So Martin helped me connect to uh, you know, um, Autodesk. We dragged that in. And Elisa said, hang on a minute. We need to uh, you know, look at things over 1,000. OK, and that's fine. And then we tested it. We tested that the Slack worked. We tested the order desk worked. And we published it to a portal. And so you know, that's really cool. But what can we do with it? Well, there's RAM. I'm going to take that from the sandbox one that we just did it. And I'm going to put it into our real internal one, version 3. Fantastic. We're ready to go. We've built it. Let's go, go, go. And so what we have is our internal portal here. I've got Coffee Order 3, the new one that we just built at TechCon 2023 at the same time as the older ones. We're not forcing people to move to the new ones. You can run them all at the same time. So what Anna-Louisa came up with, because she's really rather cool on these things, is she said, this is all very well having an API, but we get a lot of people just dropping around. People coming into reception saying, I want to buy some coffee. And we say, you know, we don't want to say, do you want to go to the website? Can you go to the mobile app? We just want to give them coffee. Or people call up, and we don't want to sell them coffee. And we said, tell me what, why don't we build like an internal website that people can use? And it's like, that's going to take ages, and we don't have the app developers. They're developing the customer app. Wouldn't it be great if we could just type the orders into a spreadsheet and have them happen automatically? Yeah, it would. So we created a Google Sheet. So Annalisa created a Google Sheet for us with all of the order data in here. And what we've got is the customer ID, et cetera, all that kind of stuff. Now, how do we get it from a Google Sheet into our order desk system? Well, I think we just created an API. So what we want to do is reuse that API we just built and to enable us to do this really cool um, sheet system. So in the catalog, there's our coffee order API that you just saw us build. And also, we've got the Google Sheets connector. So again, you know, IBM integration comes with a load of connectors already built in. So you can see here, there's the order create that we built. And if you go to the Google Sheets, it shows you everything that it does. And what we can do is it can talk to Google Sheets, and it can react when something changes in Google Sheets. And so what I want to do when a new row arrives in Google Sheets, I want to take the data from Google Sheets, put it into the um, Autodesk system. That's what I'm going to do. So I've got to build that. So here we are. So uh, Annalise is going to come in, and she's going to make this happen. So. Notice how when you do an event-driven flow, I, we want this to start when something happens. It looks the same as an API. It doesn't want a request and a response, because we don't need that. But we do have, how do you want to start your flow? OK, I want to start it with Google Sheets, with a row, and then you can complete rows appended. That's fine. So there I go. 
And I go in and I say, okay, well, Google Sheets has got a lot of sheets. Which ones do I want? I want Acme Coffee orders. How does it know? It goes off to Google Sheets, looks at all the ones that I have in there and lets me choose. It doesn't ask me to type anything in, that's too hard. It also knows all of the sheets in my Google Sheet and it picks them. So basically we can just create this and we're done. So anytime anything gets appended to that sheet, we're all good. Now, of course, we need the API. So we select it from the catalog and we put it straight in. And here's all those fields that we saw before. There's my handy friend Watson giving some uh, mapping suggestions. So I'm going to take those. And notice it's now bringing the data in from Google Sheets. You can see the Google Sheets icon. But city and state, what's the I and the J for? Well, that's the uh, column name from the spreadsheet. But it's clever enough to know that the column headers are actually the fields so it's helping you out. It's giving you the description. So I'm going to apply those suggestions and I'm going to go through. And basically, all I need to do is map exactly as I did before. So I go through and I'm going to pick column A, which is order ID for the uh, order. I'm going to pick the uh, customer. I'm going to pick the email. And again, it is just simply as easy. You can see Watson kicking in beside, behind the scenes, trying to find the best fit for me to try and help me out. And boy, when you have hundreds of columns and hundreds of fields, <laughs> Watson really is, is helpful. And we're building this in real time here. So I'm going through postcode. Can't find postcode. So I can browse through everything. Oh, it's American. It's zip code. OK, fine. No problem. Country. There we go. And again, I want to order some coffee. So I want to do the item. I want to do the quantity. I'm just going to uh, type the head. Um, get the price. Again, you know, sometimes I get good suggestions, sometimes I don't. If I run it over and over again, I will get more and more and more. And I can go through, I've got the customer first name in there, that's fine. I can directly type in the order source. I don't need to map a field, I can just type what I, what I want. I can go through, I can look at the phone here. So I can do all sorts of formulas, and there's other sessions on these, but um, you know, you just literally type them in like you do in a spreadsheet. And basically we go in, first name and last name, that's there. And um, I think we're done. Now, we could use the inbuilt testing, the same one that we did for the API. But um, we're kind of short of time. So why don't we just uh, start this up and give it a go? So what I'm going to do, well, I'm going to save it. I'm going to start my flow. And my flow is now listening to Google Sheets. It's connected to Google Sheets out in the cloud. It's connected to my coffee order API, which remember is connected to um, Autodesk. And so it's running. It's ready to go. It's running um, on OpenShift and it's, and it's ready to go. So we can see that this is not my first test through here. As we go through, and other people have been adding in because, of course, it's Google Sheets. But I'm going to go uh, with Tech2 for an order ID, good old Tim Techie, because after a while, there's only so many names you can bring up. Uh, I've been taught by my American friends that all American phone numbers start with 555 for some reason. Um, Main Street, the most popular road. City, as always, people mentioned somewhere in Arizona. Zip code again, I don't know, whatever, 654321. Country is USA. And basically, I'm going to go through, you know, hit the quantity, because remember, we had the, uh, the quantity in the Slack. It says if it's over 1,000, 200 times 300, that is a big bag of mega strong coffee. So let's uh, put that in there. As soon as I add that in, so if a customer comes in, I'll say, yeah, just I'll just take your order there. Let me just type it in. As soon as I type that into the spreadsheet, IBM App Connect is going to be listening to the spreadsheet, picking up the new row, and it's going to be putting it through our API into the orders. I can't see it there. Oh, yeah, hang on. Let me just hit refresh. That's all fine. And I can see Tim Techie at the top with $60,000 worth of coffee. Now, that's $60,000 worth of coffee. Um, yeah, I mean, Tim probably you know, buys a lot of coffee. Um, and it's great to have him along as, a, as one of our partners. But 60000 does that look all right? Hmm, I don't know. We should probably get someone to check. So remember we had our Slack in there? Well, there it is. Um, whoops, just off the top of the screen. There we go. Um, there's a high value received from Tim Tech, and the order is 60000 And so we've built an API. We've published an API. We've put it into our internal portal. We've reused it for that really cool thing Annalisa thought of about you know make, making it easier to sell more and more coffee. And that, believe it or not, is the end of the demo. I appreciate we um, have possibly gone over. I do apologize for any uh, audio problems we may have had. Um, I can see things coming up saying that it might be choppy. 
Um, Rashmi, I'm going to invite you back in to speak as well. I'm going to put the slides back up and just finish off the uh, finish off the session. Um, Rashmi, if you'd like to join me and add any more comments you'd like to say. So I am going to come back in. You should be able to see it. Hopefully you can see the first one that we did. So we share the API. We built a new API. We published it and we reused it. We did exactly what Rashmi said we were going to do. We Actually, an API. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you're showing the right chart. Um, let me just get to the chart where we were trying to do the recap. One second. Okay. Can you can you not see a sign saying demo recap? Is that not done on there? Yep. Now now it is. Now it is. Okay. okay. Apologies. So as Rashmi said, dive in any time, Rashmi. We showed how we can self sign up. We showed we did reusable connectivity. We built an integration using the API flows, and we got together as a team and we built an API. Very aware of time, we talked about the new connected development kit. Go and check this out on Thursday. Uh, Ram and Swami are going to show you how to, you can build your own connectors, and so you can build this demo exactly as I did here. Um, thanks for Ram for building that, and you know it's really cool, it's new this year, and you're gonna have a lot of time, a lot of fun using it. We would also like to say thank you so much for attending TechCon. Both Rashmi and I, we've really enjoyed uh, talking to you. So the next thing, we're going to have our partners, Bordix, present, uh, going through. Hope you'll stay with us through that. And there are office hours every day at 2.30 30, 2 30 Eastern. So Rashmi and I will be there to take your questions and your thoughts you have um, with all the rest of our presenters. And um, I believe we have four minutes to go. I don't know if we have uh, any questions in the chat. I couldn't see them, but uh, Rashmi, if you'd like to... We have a couple, a couple of questions here. Uh, thanks, Sandy. So number one was uh, regarding API, App Connect, and MQ. How do they work together? Because they seem API and App Connect working together. So how MQ fits on this uh, speech? Yeah, MQ. We we love MQ. It's built literally downstairs from where I'm sitting um, here in here in IBM Hursley. So what we have is App Connect can talk natively to MQ with uh, App Connect nodes, and um, there's App Connect connectors in there, so it speaks to MQ. So you can expose MQ as an API through App Connect. Also, if you want to expose MQ through Data Power, you can expose it through Data Power as uh, you know, using it as a gateway as well. So basically, the APIs um, can call App Connect. App Connect can call MQ. The event-driven flow, when something happens, when a message is on MQ, we can kick off and do something like that. So yeah, I mean, basically, they're literally one floor down from us. You can link all of this to MQ really seamlessly. And with Cloud Platform integration, it's all in the box. You, you get them all there. So yeah, it's a great, great one. Nice. The last one that I have here is, um, does ACE or API Connect support a synchronous API standard? So that's interesting, the asynchronous API standard. Um, I'm not sure if that's a segue. Um, so we can do asynchronous um, APIs with an ACE through asynchronous HTTP. But for asynchronous APIs with IBM integration, what I would do is I would encourage you to check out our event gateway and our event streams and our event endpoint manager. Again, it's built into CP4i. And I believe there's some sessions on this. If you look for the events uh, track, you'll see people like Alan Chat there. And you'll see that we can put asynchronous APIs from its streams and gives everything. And that portal that you saw there with the REST APIs that we had, that portal supports having async APIs and REST APIs in the same portal. So when you give them to the customers, you can see the sync and the async APIs in the same portal. Check out the messaging and events track, and you'll probably see a lot more detail on this. Great. Hey. Well, that's uh, all of the questions and we're about uh, top of the hour now. So again, sorry for all of, all of the audio problems. Uh, recordings will be available and should have, uh, shouldn't have audio issues. Should be include everything displayed today. So um, if we did not get your question, meet us as uh, Andy already mentioned at office hours at 2.30 today. Um, so next, you, you won't want to miss our conversation with Mark Randolph. Click on Cultivating Curiosity session as you refresh your coffee or grab some lunch or snacks. 
Mark is an impressive innovator and will definitely inspire you. So see you in a bit. Thank you. Thank you. How are we? Are we still here? Are we still on? Do we still have audio? Uh, we have audio.